I was born in Edinburgh, Scotland, and it's a, you know, although it's a city, it's a pretty remote region, Scotland, and I was always excited about being outdoors and uh, uh, walking around and, uh, and seeing those sorts of barren landscapes. So when we moved to, to the U.S., uh, I still had that interest and uh, started going to museums, got very excited about explorers and read National Geographic and always wanted to be uh, an explorer, somebody who went to remote regions. I remember flying into Antarctica for New Zealand and you know, first you fly over the ocean and of course it just gets colder and colder. You begin to see icebergs and then you see spectacular mountain ranges along the coast of, of Antarctica that I was to spend the next few years of my life actually exploring. It was for me an absolute dream come true. I was so excited to go uh, to a place that was so remote, a place that basically didn't have any people in it and that was clearly very different than anything I had known. It was super exciting and uh, that's one of my big personal reasons for taking students into the field because you get to see that excitement every single time, no matter where you take them. It could be the high mountains of the Himalayas or, or the Antarctic, but it's really phenomenal to see it way, the way it changes your perspective. There are a lot of things that we don't measure that, that often uh, that have a tremendous impact on our health and ecosystem health, but we don't necessarily have a way to say that the levels are higher today than the past, except through ice cores. All of a sudden, ice cores uh, from the very first one that I was involved in collecting in um, 1978, we now find that they're tremendous opportunity to, to get perspective about how lead levels have changed in the atmosphere, how temperature has changed in the atmosphere, and a whole variety of other things. So there is very little, in fact, that isn't changing uh, as a consequence of climate change. It doesn't mean that you get the same kind of climate change everywhere. It doesn't, uh, you don't get the same magnitude. There are parts of the United States that uh, haven't experienced much of a temperature change yet. But the trends are all there when you look at the models, when you look at any of the information. Then as we begin to think about the loss of glaciers, because glaciers are this tremendous resource by which we can actually understand how much of the planet is, is warming, there are many, many parts of the world where the glaciers are melting. And those glaciers are the primary source of fresh water, and they are in many cases the primary source of energy in the form of hydroelectric power. I think our most major discovery is probably the identification of the fact that uh, wind systems, atmospheric circulation, can change its pattern very, very quickly. And that leads to sort of the second big discovery that we've worked on, that these rapid changes in climate, which we call abrupt climate change, can happen so fast uh, that they can lead to the complete collapse of civilizations. A third would be many, many different contributions to understanding how much the chemistry of the atmosphere has changed. We only know because of ice cores that this is not the way the natural world normally operates. Climate Change Institute uh, is one of the oldest multidisciplinary climate research units in the world. Uh, and multidisciplinary is very important. We were founded by Hal Borns, our founding director, uh, about 43, 44 years ago. Uh, and that was the basis for the Institute, was that we would be looking at physical, chemical, biological, and social aspects of climate change. Uh, and if anything, we've become stronger at that. Climate change is something completely different uh, today than it was from when I started. It's something completely different than it was when I even came here as director in early 2000. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it is so much a part of our lives uh, that the Institute needs to understand the direction that is changing. We're certainly not the only organization in the world that does this, but I think we are one of the most outstanding in terms of our multidisciplinary approach. And when you, when you add up all of the major um, findings that have come from the Institute, we really have been a remarkable force. I believe I've covered more unexplored territory 
on the surface than any other human. And I can go so far as to say that I probably have the world record for surface travel over Antarctica. And I have about 100 first ascents, mountain ascents, uh, some very easy, not, some not so easy. Spent about uh, four to five years of my life living in a tent. And we might be getting ice that's actually just formed. I've been very lucky in my career because I've had the opportunity to see a lot of things that most people never get to see by going to these remote places. I've had the opportunity to uh, to follow one of my great pa passions, which was adventure. I have had the opportunities to see those things turn into something that actually had value to other people applied. Uh, I've had the opportunity to start large programs and centers on my own. And I'm now in a, in a center that was established without me, obviously, but to be able to work with a great group of people who were very talented and who are open-minded about what we need to do for the future.